This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. For a free seven day trial and 30% off the life of your account, go to itpro.tv slash knowhow and use the code knowhow30. And now through December 31st, 2016, if you purchase a premium annual membership, you'll get an additional three months added to your first year. And by iFixit. You've seen their teardowns all over the internet, the free repair guide for everything, and the ultimate marketplace for electronic tools and parts. For $5 off your purchase of $10 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code knowhow at checkout. Today on Know How. Is that a Pico in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see Acer at IFA? It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Palliser. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for as much time as we have before Brian's mom calls us in to wash up for supper, we're going to be showing you some of the stuff we've been geeking out to so you can take it home and geek out on your own. Cranky Hippo. Padre. It's kind of sharp today. Thank you. Well, it's the, the Christmas party tonight. Ooh, go figure. So uh, rather than go home and change, I just figured I'd dress up nice. I, I'm in my, uh, my formal best. <laughs> no, actually, for the Christmas card, you did. You had you I, went all I went out. All out. I, I have only ever seen the uh, the getup that you were wearing in photos. I and know it's it's a, it's a weird thing, but you know, every once in a while, you got to bust it out to remember, make sure it still fits. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It did look comfy, though. <laughs> it was. It was incredibly look. comfy. The thing about Priestley vestments is they're comfy when it's cold. The winter time is the best. Try yeah. to wear those in the summer. No, when it's like 110 degrees and 80 percent humidity, and you're wearing wait a. So they don't have like a summer version with like cutoffs or something. Yeah, yeah. we've for, got like the Daisy Duke clerical right. garb. Yep. Yeah, yeah. For for when you're in Hawaii and stuff like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> thank goodness. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about clerical garb. Instead, we're uh, we want to give you a little something, something, something that we've been enjoying. Specifically, how do you project? How do you display? How do you show off some of your coolest content? Some of your funnest games. Now we right. will be in just a bit. We're going to be doing a first look because we got two new presents from Acer. Nice. A little something, yes, something yes. to play with. Uh, we saw them first at IFA. And by the way, we will be going back to IFA in the middle segment because we wanted to show them that 21-inch laptop that a lot of people hadn't seen. Yeah. And we also wanted to show off a segment that you did on curved monitors because curved monitors kind of sound gimmicky until right. you see them set up the right way. And you're like, oh, then That's it makes what sense. For. Then the little light bulb goes off, yeah. you know, yeah. and there it has to be in the right setup, and then also uh, the particular game that yes. you may or may not be playing has to have the perspective. Yes. So, so we'll we've got some that. techno lust coming your way, but before we get there, we wanted to show you something affordable. Now, Brian, mm -hmm. this is the time that people go with, over the mountains, through the woods, right. under a river. And through a volcano to grandma's house. I, I right, don't know the song. Lions and bears and <laughs> all that stuff. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh my yeah. uh, we thought maybe we wanted to show off some gadgets, a gadget that might be a companion mm -hmm. for the family geek, the guy who's got, you know, he's dragging kids and he right, needs to make sure they stay right. entertained so they don't rip apart the <laughs> condo or the campsite or whatever they're using. Or, yeah, you're going over to a relative's house and you want to show off the photos that you got yes. from Berlin this year. Isn't it fun to have everyone sit around like a, <laughs> a little phone screen? <laughs> yeah. or, or even a laptop, you know, taking the laptop and going, okay, here's where we were at the theater. I okay, let's, yeah. Actually, it's kind of scary how often that happens. I, so this Thanksgiving, I had one of my relatives pull out their phone and they set it up on the table like kind of tilted against something like a, a glass of wine and they're flipping through photos trying to show us stuff like, now see uh, in most realities most alternate dimensions the glass of wine would at some point flip down and spray everyone and in red wine yeah yeah and yeah. It, it did actually it, that's, that's <laughs> they got a little over excited went, oops oh. well what if what if you could have a gadget that would fit very nicely into your gear bag yeah. that could connect to your phone, to your tablet, to your laptop, to a DVD player that could create something between a 24 and a 60 inch picture for pretty much anyone anywhere. 
I'd say I'd really want to use that because there is a Christmas party that me and uh, Mr. Gumpel go to every year where we play Mario Party. Ah. And sometimes it's just a little tiny CRT that we're playing on. If we could play that on like a like on a projector, that would make me actually it would probably make me rage more. Well, I'm I'm about to invoke the hippo rage because I've got something right here. This is the Archer, not Archer, A C H E E R. Archer. Not Archer. Ar okay. Not Archer. Archer. This is a Pico projector. So we've seen these a lot. In fact, I have probably about 10 of these things sitting on shelves back home because most of them are OEM pieces of Feu. You know, they're, ah. not, they're not particularly good. I mean, they, they work, but image quality has always been a little iffy, mm -hmm. not real rich on the features. It, I mean, what good does it do to have a Pico projector if no one can actually see the picture coming out of the projector? Right, I, and understandably, it's hard to get uh, such thing, something so small to be bright enough in you know a, a lit room or something like that. Precisely, and, and so that's why I asked for this one. It's a little more expensive than the ones you might get from the Sharper Image catalog. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a $200 unit, but for it the $200... It's so cute! It is cute. It Look is at a this. little baby Look at projector. Little baby projector. It is Pico. Now, uh, now, this is what I like, because you know how much I travel. <laughs> and how often you have your scale ready. I always have my scale ready. And uh, we're talking about, altogether, under 250 grams. Well, yeah. okay. This thing is tiny. Grams. Yeah. And then this is my Nexus 6P. Almost 200 grams. Yeah, it's exactly. 50 grams more than my phone. And what's in it's there nothing. is not just a Pico projector, but you've got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So it acts as a battery bank what? while also being able to power the projector by itself. That's awesome. Yeah. Look how tiny that little light, the little uh, lens is in that, there. That little lens is actually a 100 lumen LED lamp. It's got an 854 by 480 native resolution, which is typical. That's that's about the size you're going to get for the uh, the little uh, chip that's inside there. Yeah. But it can scale anything from 640 by 480 all the way up to 1920 by 1080. So I mean, it's got full HD. Not bad. Uh, it will scale it down to uh, six uh, 854 by 480, but. I mean, that it actually works still quite well. Cool. Uh, it gives you a bunch of accessories, so everything from the the tripod, which you do need because... Unlike, I was going to say, this is key. Because yeah. how many times have I... Well, I don't know about anyone else, but when I've had projectors, I've had to get, like, cards or... <laughs> to stack them. And just, like, yeah, if this was the projector, I have to, you know, put my phone underneath it and try and use it like that. Well, I mean, there are some other Pico projectors that include, like, a little kickstand in the unit. Or they have, like, the little screw yeah, feet that... I don't like those. Me. They almost never work right. I mean, even... You, you end up doing the same thing. You, yeah. you put the leg up, they're like, okay, let's wedge some books under here. Yep, exactly. Uh, I, I find that this works much better especially since this has a this is a standard tripod mount so if yeah. you've got a camera tripod this will work just fine or if you've got a mount like a wall mount for a security camera this will also fit just fine so, so oh, that's, that's okay. kind of nice I, I do enjoy that now uh, the other specs on this is it's got a one watt speaker not great it will work <laughs> Wait, there's, but, a, I mean, well, there's a speaker on it there is because it, it does HDMI in I mean you've got several input options we'll be talking about them in a bit okay. uh, I would suggest that if you're gonna use this for actual entertainment yeah. don't count on the internal speaker it's, no. instead get I something mean, like this they, they do have an audio out Oh, so you can just daisy chain it into a nice speaker and now you've got full room, room sound it doesn't have mobile. Bluetooth does it no okay. but has something even better well, let's uh -huh. talk about this okay let's talk about the options for getting stuff into the projector. Okay. Uh, first of all, this thing will accept USB drives. So nice. if you've got a USB drive with a bunch of files you've copied from YouTube or a bunch of standard files that you've compressed into MP4, mm -hmm. this will play just fine. It won't do things like if you rip a DVD, it won't play the oh, VOB yeah, yeah. files. If you've used a weird format like DivX, it's not going to play that either. But yeah. As you can see, actually, maybe you can't see. Uh, you know what we should probably do? What? Let's go ahead and set this up. This what is screen. that? Oh, I don't know. A little something, something I picked up a while back. A screen. <laughs> All right. That's pretty that's slick. Cause, that's because I, like I, come, I come prepared, Brian. That's what I do. That's pretty awesome. Okay, I like if you that. Could, if like you could bring the, bring the light down a little bit, Alex, so that uh, people Brian, can actually see. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay, the oh, board's yeah, over got, here. Uh, how about that? So there's a little there's a little uh, uh, not a rotation thing on the side that controls the focus, so I can focus this up. Oh, there well. we go. Uh, now it's the, actually I, this is too yeah. bright. There we go. Now the nice thing about this is it's got this little decent menu, and it's also got a remote control, so you can operate this from from, from a distance. But uh, it will accept 
movies and pictures on USB. So if you're connected, all you have to do is oh, do this. Well, I'm just going to use this because I, I actually haven't set up the uh, remote yet. Ah. There. Nope. That. Well, there we go. That's pretty sharp, that image. See, and I can choose this. I'm going to say, let's play the demo vid. Mm -hmm. Let's play mm -hmm. the beer lifting fail. Now, it... So that is 5, oh. Right? Again, That's audio not is not great, but I mean, no. if, if you just need something like if in, a, in a presentation, this will work. Right. If you are going to be doing a movie, any sort of entertainment, I would suggest that you, you know, actually get a real speaker. Well, it's kind of like when you buy a monitor and it comes with speakers. It's uh, it's nice to have, but I don't rely on it. Ooh, wait. Actually, look, you can kind of see it. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Sorry. Just... We're having too much fun. Uh, what I like about something like this is uh -huh. this unit has so many possibilities. We could use this on many, many different projects here on Know How. Look at that. Yeah, how about that? That's pretty cool. Now, uh, there are a few caveats about this thing. First of all, it does provide 5 volt power out of this USB, so I can use it mm -hmm. to power up a, um, a, what do you call it, uh, like if I wanted to charge my phone. Uh, but it only charges from a 12 volt source. This is something that I've seen with a lot of Pico projectors like the ZTE and the Sprint one. Yeah. Which is, wouldn't it be nice if you could charge it with five volt? Right. Uh, I mean, it would be much slower. The, the battery would charge way, way slow over a 12 volt, two amp, but it does give me the flexibility of being able to leave this adapter because I mean, this is a kind of a chunky bit of kit. Yeah, yeah. How long does the battery last on it? Uh, if you run this full, full throttle, uh, it's got a, what is it, a 12-watt draw. It's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so let me do the, the math here really quick. 12 watt equals 5 volts times the draw, so the draw will put it at na, 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 divided by 60, so about 100 minutes. Okay. It'll go about 100 minutes on a full charge, and because it's projecting at full power the entire time, it, that's not really going to differ. Now, the other input options, of course, if I want to, I can uh, hook up HDMI because you've got a standard HDMI connector on this. Yes. And then you just sort of scroll over to oh, HDMI. God. You know how this, I want this for the Raspberry Pi MAME that I have. Oh, we're going to talk about this. And then just break out a little self-contained box with the, the Pi, that, and go play games at my friend's houses. Brian, your co-host has already designed that. Oh, my. I should have thought. I yeah. should have known. So have known. right now it's displaying the uh, the 1080p output from uh, my monitor. It, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that down a little bit. Exactly. I know, I know. We should have the light console right here. No, Although, right. not often are we doing projection on the screen. So this is the Sistine Chapel. This will actually get you, uh, you know, if, if you're okay, if you're in a darkened room, you can get about 70 inches, 69 or so inches uh, of an image. I, I think that this is more right, so you know, about 24 to 30 inches uh -huh. is what you're looking at. If you're projecting on a non-screen, you kind of want to keep it around 20 inches. Okay. Because okay. these kinds of screens, they're actually designed to reflect light. They, they actually do look better. Okay. But it is light enough and it's small enough that you could just project on a white wall somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, pretty cool. Yeah. The other thing about this is it's wireless. Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, you know what? We haven't, I don't want to, I don't want to think people, uh, have people think that I've set up the demo here. So we're going to move this to the wireless. If you go ahead and grab your Android, it works on iOS or Android. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Wi-Fi display. Oh, stop it. No, 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 stop. No, no. <laughs> How easy is it to navigate the menu system on it? Well, no. if you don't have the uh, the remote paired, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Like, I just turned it off. Right. Well, you're also trying to do it for demonstration purposes, right. so you're holding it kind so of... So, on iOS, it's going to use AirPlay. I will confess here that I didn't have complete success. On mm -hmm. an iPad, almost always works. On an iPhone, for some reason, this really doesn't like working with iPhones. I only got it to work with one of three iPhones that I played with. Huh. And what about Android phones? Android phones, it worked every time. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so HDMI. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Not HDMI. I want the wireless. You know, and Brian, sometimes your co-host, he's just... It's just not worth it. No, you're just excited about go. this. Okay. It, I like how it so, has, uh, you can hear the little fan in it. Look, it goes, I, do you want me to do Android? Do you want me to do iOS? Keep and we're like, hey, little guy, I would love for you to do Android. And then I just search for an access point? Or? Well, uh, so you've, um, on, I know how, to, how I do it in my phone. On your phone, there should be like some sort of cast, screencast. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to find this one. 
Alright, well, let's see. I guess I have to find something to cast. Oh, oh well, no, disconnect first. It will actually cast the screen of your phone. Okay. Whoa, whoa, Brian, whoa. Okay, Wait. Uh, looks like the third member of our team got tired of waiting for you, so he connected his Windows phone. So this is Continuum off of his Windows phone. This is running Windows what? 10 it, from, from over there. So it will work with Windows, it will work with Android, it will work with iOS. This That's is I, this awesome. is one of my favorite parts, actually. That is so cool. <laughs> so he just kind of snuck in. So this this is not from his laptop. This is from his phone right now. He's running Continuum on our projector. From huh. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alex. See? So how? Yeah, no, he's, he wants he's to like, be able oh, to see what let he's let doing. Let me focus that for you. There we go. That looks pretty sharp. So you just you went to, like, screen share or something, Alan? Well, let me... Like, Huh. See, it's on That's... Windows 10. It's actually I can I can do it for my laptop too. It's it's pretty pretty sweet. Wow. Oh, and just to show that we're not cheating here, I'm gonna pull the HDMI so there is nothing connected to that projector. Wow. It works just fine. That is cool. So yeah, that's perfect. So if you go over to someone's house and you want to. Well, I guess you don't need a Windows phone, but it certainly seems to work pretty well. It does. Um, you could do a slideshow or something. Yeah, and I will say I've already is, I created a 3D structure for this. Uh -huh. So it's, it's 3D printed, has a Raspi 3 at the bottom. <laughs> this will power the Raspi, so it acts as the power source for the Raspi, and it will do RetroPie. So this is a portable, <gasps> wireless on anything gaming machine. It's brilliant. Right? Brilliant. Brilliant. I love brilliant, it. Brilliant, I say. Although, I, I will say that because there's only a 4,000 milliamp battery, you can get about an hour of play before you run it down. Well, you could run it off power, right? Plug Correct. It in. Which, which is nice, because then it means that you only have one thing running, and uh, you're good to go. Hmm. So... So $200. $200. And, uh, okay. This is a pretty good holiday travel machine. I, I, I have to say, there, there are a lot of alternatives for Pico projectors, and this one just works really well. Very cool. So that is the Archer, Ar sorry, Archer. 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 This is their HDP 200 <laughs> Pico projector. You can find it on Amazon right now for about $200. And, and, you know, if we were still doing before you buy, this would be a definite buy. This, this does the stuff that those really expensive LTE and Sprint units did not do. And I, I just love the simplicity. That's really impressive. And it feels solid. Like, like I actually, yeah. I feel like I could throw that in my pocket and then carry it around with me. Is this something that's likely to happen? Is that a Pico in your pocket? <laughs> it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> All right, folks. Now, when we come back, we're going to be taking you to Berlin. Brian and I were at E for a while ago, and uh, we thought that you should take a look at the Acer Wonderland. But before yeah. we do that, I got something I want to talk to you about. Specifically, what are you going to do with your career in IT? I know there's a lot of people who want to get into it. There's a lot of promise. There's potentially a lot of money to be made in a career in IT, especially if you specialize in one of the in-demand talents, something like cloud computing or setting up an SDN. If, if you think you might have a passion for IT, then you owe it to yourself to try IT Pro TV. Now, IT Pro TV is the source, both for people who are just getting into the IT game and for people who have been there for a while. If you need to learn something new, if you need to refresh your skills, if you need to make sure you pass your certifications, IT Pro TV is the one stop for you. Now, IT Pro TV offers over 2,000 hours of content and more than 30 hours that are added every week. You can stream courses live and on demand worldwide to your Chromecast, your Roku, your Amazon Fire TV, your Apple TV, or your PC. And they recently launched their Apple TV app, which gives you yet another option to watch their content. Their course topics include Certified Information Systems Security Professional, CompTIA Security Plus, CompTIA A Plus, CompTIA Project Plus, and Ethical Hacking Version 9. Now, their upcoming courses, and these have me excited, Computing, Computer Hacking Forensics Investigator, Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, Red Hat Linux. If any of those topics, if any of those realms of knowledge sound of interest to you, you really need to sample IT Pro TV. The transcripts let you follow from start to finish or jump to any part of the video, and they've got 100-plus step-by-step virtual machine labs and transcender practice exams. It's a $109 value that's included with your subscription. IT Pro TV's clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford, TWIT, and more. You can take advantage of the low monthly subscription price and no-hassle cancellation policy. And by no-hassle, I mean no hassle. They are so confident that they're going to deliver value to you that they're not going to make you jump through hoops and, and run through a long chain of transfers and phone calls and drop calls to try to cancel the service. They'll just bid you farewell because they know you'll be back. Also, they've got a premium annual membership, which are normally $57 a month or $570 per year, but we've got a special offer for our listeners. 
for a free seven-day trial and 30% off the life of your account, go to itpro.tv slash knowhow. That's itpro.tv slash knowhow and use the code knowhow30. And through December 31st, 2016, if you purchase a premium annual membership, you'll get an additional three months on your first year. That's 15 months for the price of 12. Just visit itpro.tv slash knowhow. That's itpro.tv slash knowhow. And use the code knowhow30. IT Pro TV, a better IT life awaits. And we thank IT Pro TV for their support of knowhow. Hey, Brian. Yeah. We had fun in Berlin. We had a lot of fun in Berlin. Do you remember that first day when uh, the air conditioner wasn't on and all of the equipment was on and it was about 100,000 degrees? <laughs> uh, yeah, that wasn't as fun, but uh, yeah. I did enjoy my time in Berlin. And uh, yeah. there was a lot of cool things to see at IFA. It was my first time ever going to that event or just being in Europe, period. Uh, but the first day was a little rough. It was rough. It was yeah. rough. We didn't know what to expect. It was our first time at the event and it was one of these... This is really? Is it going to be like this the whole time? Because because our cameraman's melting. Yes, yes. I felt bad for the cameraman. And uh, the thing about IFA was the they say press days. And what press <laughs> days means is that nothing's set up. Yeah. But there's people to talk to. And then after the press days is the, when the show floor opens. And they have everything set up. But there's no one to talk to really after exactly. that. Hey, here in the States, when we have a press day for an event like NAB or CES, the mm -hmm. whole idea is, okay, they have stuff set up so that we can come and we can film before the crowds come in. And right. over there, it just means, oh, no, you can come and just walk around and see us build the booths. It's like, right. um, uh, okay, which is we didn't want to do that. But. Which is interesting, but it's hard to get content it that really way. It really is. I, mean, I loved it. It's, yeah. it's fun for me, but I'm like, there's not a lot here that we're going to show the audience. Right. Until we made our way to one of like hall four out of 50. Right. And we found Acer. That's right. Yeah. They actually had their booth all set up and hot. it was really hot. Imagine, imagine like it was summer really hot, hot plus add in all the heat of all the computers on at the same time. Yes, yeah. yeah. So not only are the computers generating heat, but the air conditioning wasn't working, and uh, there, there was. Uh, I felt bad for the construction workers too. The guys who were putting all the booths together. There was just. It was so hot. They so look so it's good that you prefaced with that because yeah. when we watch this video, you you're going to understand go, why. Yeah, why are people? Look, why do they look like they're uh, having heart attacks? Yeah, I, exactly. it felt like we might because yeah. it was a lot of walking without a lot of uh, air conditioning. Well, without further ado, here is the Acer Wonderland. This is the world's first notebook that has a curved display. 21 inch, 21 by 9 aspect ratio. This is the absolute most immersive gaming experience you can have today on the market. Now, we have seen the Predator 17. It's actually one of my favorite. In fact, I bought one after I reviewed it because I needed power on the go. There are a couple of things that people will notice about this. The first sure. is this beautiful 21-inch curved monitor. Yeah, that's a little bit of an eye-catcher. Yep. But then the overall design, this is really a desktop replacement. There have been desktop replacements in the past, but this is the full-size keyboard, all the peripherals, all the ports that you would expect out of a Predator desktop. How did you squeeze that into this form factor without destroying your power slash thermal heat budget? Sure, so it was really difficult. Um, in order to combine uh, this, I mean, this is, this is a monitor. It's eye tracking. It's Core i7, seventh gen, by the way. Uh, two NVIDIA GTX 1080s running in SLI. I mean, this is desktop power, desktop components, um, including monitor, mechanical keyboard. We need a serious cooling system in order to run all of these components, which we will also be overclocking, of course. So in order to do that, we have five fans inside, including three of our metal Aeroblade fans. Um, with this cooling system, we are definitely going to have best-in-class performance, and this will certainly rival any of the top-end gaming desktops that you may have. What's happened is uh, NVIDIA has now, uh, with their launch of the 10 series, they've removed the M from their marketing. So what that means is that if your gaming desktop has two 1080s in SLI, this also has two 1080s in SLI. So unless you're overclocking, this is going to be more powerful than your desktop. Where does this go next? This, this almost feels like one of those concept cars that you will never be sold, but this is actually making it to the market. Right. Where can, can Acer next take this? Is it going to be three-way 1080s? It's, is, are you going to put, be putting two processors with eight cores each into it? What is next in the Predator lineup? Sure. So right now we can see clearly that the trend is immersion. 
that's what the demand is right now in the gaming market. So this represents the most immersive experience we can provide. So we've included new technology such as eye tracking. Now, in the future, we expect a lot of these components to become smaller and more efficient, which means we can take what is now not super portable and make it more portable. So that's one way we can push it. But we also want to make sure that we leave space to, um, to design products that include the best of the best and the highest end components. So we've, we've done the best possible notebook that we can do. So we may want to stay tuned um, to see what Predator may have to offer in other categories. So folks, what you're seeing right here is the eye tracking on the Predator 21. Uh, believe it or not, right now, I am not touching the keyboard at all. Instead, it's looking at where my eyes are looking and it's rotating the screen to match. Imagine what this could do for your gaming experience where you shoot where you look. Now in the second here, it's going to move over to a, uh, a different screen where it's actually going to allow me to target and then fire only using the spacebar. So I'm not using any other keys except for the firing key, which is, is my spacebar. Let's see how I do. So standard spaceship scenario. And again, I'm looking to the left, I'm looking to the right. I'm looking for, oh, there's a target. So I'm only pressing the spacebar, I'm only firing, but I'm aiming with my eyes. And again, this is a sort of a next-gen experience. It's one of these things where once you've seen it, and once you've seen it in action, it's very difficult to move back to the, uh, the old way of controlling your game experience. And uh, hold on, wait. I got bad guys here. Okay, you die. Die. You die. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So if you want to see the latest and the latest and greatest in game control, you're going to need some uh, face tracking here on the Predator. Hold on, I'm, I think I'm about to die. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk over the last few months over curved monitors. Yes, they look cool. Yes, they're interesting. Yes, it's technology that we haven't seen before. But what really are they for? Well, here at IFA, at the Acer booth, we found out exactly what they're for. My host, Cranky Hippo, is here playing Need for Speed. And what you see is probably the best demonstration of what curved monitors can do, especially in a multi-monitor setup. Now, games like Need for Speed, games like Rocket League, are being set up so that you get this wonderful view of uh, what it would actually be like to be in a cockpit. It's not just that flat screen that's dead in front of you, but you have your peripheral vision from the right and the left. Now, to make this work, it's not just simply a matter of hooking up a lot of monitors, because that, while it looks nice, is not going to give you the experience. You need software that's been designed to give you slightly different views on the left and the right so that it actually mimics what you get with your peripheral vision. You're also going to want a certain piece of technology called G-Sync. It's going to make sure that you're not going to get frame shearing between the screens as the frame rate rises. Oh, this is only going to be possible when you've got really powerful desktops, something like the Acer Predator that we're playing on right now. And again, you are going to need a, a large workspace in order to make this a complete experience. But I will say this. After looking at this, after playing this game, after seeing what it does for the gaming experience, once you've gone with curved multiple monitors, you won't want to go back. It's like a taxi driver this way. Where are my rockets? Or is it the middle, Brian? I'm going to thread the, thread the needle. needle. Or not. <laughs> Close. <laughs> okay, I learned I'm, I'm not good at driving games <laughs> at all. It's a little difficult when you're standing up like that. It is, too. But yeah. I, you know, that experience, it, it's easy to, des to describe. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I had a bunch of monitors around me, but how it actually feels. Right. Because when it's like, it, you see it, you see it in the video, it kind of skews the view as it right. moves past you. That's how it it feels like in real life. Right, right. It's the, the immersion, and it's not. So, it's easy to um, just say, like, oh, I have a bunch of monitors yeah. about me. Like, that should just make me feel like I'm in it. But you actually have to skew the perspective. Otherwise, it doesn't look right in your peripheral vision. And when you play racing games like that, yeah. it, it feels... It's, it, it's immersive. That's, yes, it that's makes you feel like about. you're in the cockpit. Yes. And then 
So I was, I've played, I played, what was that, Need for Speed mm -hmm. at EFA. I, I spent way too much time playing that game there, or not enough time. Colleen, even Colleen, our producer, played. Even she, uh, Colleen yeah. played. And uh, another game that I played was Rocket League in that oh, sort of setup. Yeah. And it's just like, you can see things coming at you from the sides, so you like can anticipate things much sooner than you would otherwise. And it's like, once you have that setup, it's like, I wanted to come back. You don't back want to go back. Yeah. I wanted to say, I need three monitors for video editing. I need full <laughs> timeline immersion. <laughs> Uh, and then maybe some games after work. Well, it's getting to that point where because you know, before it was just it was a cool demo piece. It's yeah. like, oh, I have a lot of monitors. Okay, well, what do you do with them? Well, uh, I have stuff on every screen. Yeah. But it's getting to that point where games like Need for Speed, games like COD, games like Rocket League, mm -hmm. there's actually a competitive advantage from having the immersion. There is, like, and like yeah. in that setup, it makes sense. When uh, when we had the Acer Predator that I was reviewing, we had that 28 inch. Oh, uh, 4K right, monitor right. that was flat screen it was beautiful and then Leo built the gaming machine the for the VR monitor. with the curved and just one curved monitor with that kind of widescreen like I, I preferred the 28 inch 16 by 10 uh, screen over it but when you put them next it, to each other in sequence I, that's the way to do it right. if you're going to have a curved screen and, and that's I think that's been the missing piece because people when people buy that curved monitor right now they're like okay I paid a lot more and I kind of prefer the flat one. Well, yeah. yeah, you prefer the flat one if you've just got two or three and they're at a flat plane. Right. But if you're actually building a customized station where you know the monitors are going to go around you, mm -hmm. curved really does come into its own. It's pretty cool. It yeah. is pretty cool. I, uh, I will confess to this. As cool as the three-monitor setup was, as I was sitting there, I was thinking... Five would be awesome. Like I, like I actually, I don't want to see the edge of the image. I right. want like the edge of the image to, to go behind me. So even if I turn my head, I still see image. You basically, you want like an orb that you step into and I there's do. just screens all around you. Like why, why do five? Do six and stack them on top of each other. Ah, the orb, orders re regarding bodyguarding. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only the three monitors, too, which were definitely a highlight, but uh, that laptop that we looked at was insane. It is pretty good. It was like, okay, this is a, a nuts laptop, and then we'll turn the dial to not just 11, we're going to go to 12 on it. And you'll notice we didn't do a lot of close-ups, even though we really wanted to, and that's mm -hmm. because what they had at the show was... It's like a prototype. It's a prototype. Yeah. It's, it's called the 21X. It should be coming out... Uh, might make it out before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I know that they're still working on a couple of things. Like battery power was a big one for them. Right. You know, they don't want to give you three minutes of battery life. So right. they're, they're, they're going to be playing around with it. But the keyboard felt wonderful. I mean, <laughs> two <laughs> GTX 1080s That's in that crazy. form factor. Yeah, battery life? It's yeah, not, you're, not you're, you're just plugging this life. in. The only thing you will need the battery for is if you're web browsing for a moment and then you're like, okay, time for games. Right. And one of the other things I did was the trackpad. Yeah. It, it actually flips over to become a full keypad. That was pretty I'm nifty. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, because some people do like that. That's, yeah. They like that feel. The thing that, that I liked the most about it, too, was when we when we talked to the engineer who worked on it, too, you could tell that his passion was just playing with computers. Yeah. And he's like, they kind of just let me do what I want. And they I put me in nuts. a room, and yeah. they said... Wow me. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, yeah. A cool, that's a cool mission. That, and so having someone who's passionate about PCs put yeah. something together like that, that was like, it was like, you know, like um, somebody who likes race cars and just like yes. trying to put together the most insane race car they could. And, and that's what they did. That is exactly yeah. what they did, yeah. Although, uh, unlike a lot of these other products that we see that are, you know, proof of concept, the fact that this is actually going to be viable, that you can, <laughs> they're going to mass produce this model, yeah. that's... I kudos for them because they're not going to make money off of that. No, they just no. want to say, "Hey, no, we got bragging rights." Yeah, totally. It's it's fun to see. Like even though I probably cannot afford it, I <laughs> am so happy that something like that exists. Yeah, uh, Brian, there's no probably we're not going to be able to afford that. Uh, I think it's going to be like a five thousand dollar laptop. That could be a new uh, my work <laughs> work laptop. I need that and three <laughs> of those curved monitors for video editing. I take that when we go on <laughs> on jobs to like IFA or CES or something. Try and fit that in the backpack and bring it on a plane. I, I will say. Oh, by the way, curved monitors do mm -hmm. not fit travel well. They don't travel well. They don't just, travel well. No. Just FYI. No. Uh, flat monitors fit much better in the Pelican cases. That is that is true. That is true. Uh, when we come back, we've got a bit more Acer goodness. Uh, we hinted at this at the start of the show. We've got two Ultrabooks that are sort of on the opposite ends of the spectrum, executive slash business class, whatever you want to call it, that we think might be your next mobile hit. But before we do that, let's take another moment to thank a sponsor, 
of know-how. Hey, Brian, you know, every time we do the ad for this sponsor, I just, I love it because we use them all the time. That's it's, right. Yeah. yeah. When you can when you can do an ad for a sponsor that you actually use, that you actually believed in, that, that has helped you out of tough tough situations, it makes it so much easier. It does. And it's not just the toolkit that I use to take things mm -hmm. apart. It's the fact that they have repair guides that I can yes. look at. And I, I love just watch, looking at the way they do teardowns too. Like when I go we just out had of them my on way. new screensavers doing a teardown of the, of uh, the, the new, new MacBook. MacBook. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's you know, you get to see the mind of someone who looks at a package, something that's brand new, just came out of its wrapping and says, I want to tear that thing apart. Exactly, and and uh, I think it was the new Surface Studio too that yeah. they took apart too. And it's like, I really want to know what mechanisms and how they work are in there and what it looks like when they take apart. But a lot of the new products that things that are being made aren't meant to be taken no, apart no, or put not. back together. And that's they're why I like the, the repair guide too, or the uh, repairability score. And it's like a one to ten, like it. MacBook got zero. Uh, I well, think it a got one. like got a, a one. one. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, you're not going to be repairing. That. By the way, I I did ask Leo if I could take apart his MacBook and his Surface Studio, and it doesn't. He didn't. No. No. He, no that was That's it. one of those things that you you do, and then you ask for forgiveness, right? Uh, no, it's one of those things that you do, and then you ask for unemployment benefits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. true. Well, folks, we aren't unemployed here because we use iFixit for all of our know-how projects. It is not just our choice for tools. It's not just our choice for replacement parts. It's not just a repository of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of step-by-step -step repair guides. It is the spot, the community, the place for the DIYer and the maker in each and every single one of you. Now, iFixit has done so much over the last few years for the people who like to tinker, who like to do things on their own. And they completely reimagined the showcase of their technology. That's this, the all new ProTech Toolkit. It's completely reimagined, but it's just as rugged and portable as before. Now, this kit shows their obsession with detail. They talk to their users, they talk to their customers. They said, what can we do? What do you want in the next version? and they came up with this. It's a new 64-bit driver kit that replaces the old 54-bit driver kit, and they're angled, which makes it easier to take them out and put them back in, which means it's much less likely that you're gonna lose bits. It's in a durable canvas case that has a magnetic system to hold the toolkit in there, which means it's easy to remove, but it also stays when you need it to stay. It's got a custom anodized aluminum driver handle, it's hand-selected high-quality steel bits, and they've thought of everything so you only have to worry about the fix not the tools that you're using to fix whatever it is that is broken or needs to be upgraded. That's going to give you that 64-bit driver kit. That's going to give you the precision ESD-safe tweezers. That's going to give you a pair of reverse tweezers, a wide variety of plastic opening tools and picks to safely work on tablets and smartphones, suction cups for display assembly removal, a metal spudger, and iFixit's own rubber-handed Jimmy Pry tool. All of this means that you can get in, you can fix it, and you can get out without anyone ever knowing that you were there. No more marred finishes, no more bent cases, no more using a flat screwdriver to pry open a poly case and forever damaging its look and feel. The ProTech Toolkit is the last precision toolkit that you'll ever need, and that's why it's backed by a lifetime guarantee. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to get on the iFixit train. The people at iFixit.com never stop repairing, and with this toolkit under your belt, you won't either. Head over to ifixit.com slash twit and use the code knowhow at checkout to save $5 on your purchase of $10 or more. Even if you don't buy anything, you can still use their free repair guides, troubleshooting answer forms, and the other educational resources on their website anytime your tech has an accident. Folks, if you are a DIYer, if you are a maker, or if you're just a person who likes to tinker, you owe it to yourself to try iFixit. ifixit.com, fix it right the first time. And we thank iFixit for their support of know-how. Hey, Brian, are you ready for the mighty Kamehameha of Ultrabooks? The Kamehameha, huh? Well, that might be the Kamehameha, but this is the, uh, the executive. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let it you go goes well first with the suit, because right? uh, you, uh, you, you've been kind of happy with this. We, we just got these in. We right. asked uh, Acer, we said, hey, what do you have that's new? What do you have that's light? What do you have that you think people might be interested in? The Swift 7 was something that we actually took a look at at IFA. When we came to their, their booth, mm -hmm. this was something that uh, you know, they said, hey, we know you like the uh, S7, you're going to love the, the Swift 7. Yes, uh, and you, you, so your everyday machine is the S7, and right. then my let's, let's everyday... Let's not confuse them. That's, that's this the, is Swift. the Swift. Yeah, we'll start with this. This is the Swift. Um, 
I, my everyday laptop is the MacBook Air, so I'm very accustomed to having thin, light laptop, which this very much is. Actually, this is the thinnest laptop in the world. It's 0.39 inches thick. And yeah, you, it is so, and it's really light. I like it that, Two, but it I doesn't. It's 2.48 pounds, I think. 2.4, yeah, it is. 2.48 pounds, uh, 0.39 inches thin, 13.3 uh, 1080 IPS screen. This is Gorilla Glass 4 because, well, I mean, it's going to need to be tough. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's the thing. The thinner you make it, the less the support structure there is. You better make sure the, gr the glass isn't just going to crack under its own torque. Right, right. And if, this is pretty thin, too. And the hinge is really nice, too. Like, this is doesn't feel like they compromised at all yeah. with the build quality. Like. Acer has done so much investment into hinges, both the reversible hinge for like their convertible tablets and this. This was a hinge that they pioneered on the S7, which which means like it stayed Remember how you used to buy a laptop and, and at some point like it would just start drooping on its yep. own? Yep. You will never have that. The way that these are designed is you can they they like do this for you know, 200,000 cycles. Well, it's pretty impressive too that they, it's just these two contact points and right. that's also what powers and sends signal to the screen. Right, like, and, and they've actually figured out that uh, it feels smooth, but the way the hinge is designed is it actually offers different resistance to movement what? at different angles. I did not know that. Uh, and that's, that's why, I mean, I know, I know we're talking a lot about a hinge here, but I mean, when you do a hinge right, it just feels good. I mean, look at that screen. <laughs> Now, it's not it a touch screen, right? It is not a touch screen, but you know, for me, that's not not a big deal because neither is my MacBook Air that I, uh, I use. I just want a something I can put in my la uh, back po mm. backpack, my back pocket, my back pocket. Uh, it'd be a pretty crazy big back pocket. pocket. Yeah. Something that I can put in my backpack that's not going to weigh me down, has great battery life. I just want something that I can type on, maybe play some Minecraft, a few games on here, because it does have, uh, this model has an i5. Right, but uh, it's you, a seventh gen i5, I think it's the 7Y54 uh, processor? It is, and it, so it'll clock up to 3.2, but when it's you know oh, yeah. saving power, it's around 1.2, so it throttles itself. Uh, one thing that it also has is if you're accustomed to laying in bed, and reading on your laptop before you fall asleep, it has a blue light uh, shield. I, this I like. Okay, so this is, this is starting to come to light that the, because all the light that comes from LEDs, especially the ones on laptop screens, it tends to blue a yeah. little bit. Mm -hmm. And that really messes up with your sleep pattern. So if, like, if, if, you, if you've been wondering why you get no sleep, because you're using a laptop up to five minutes before you go to bed, that's actually, that's messing you up. It's also really bad for your eyes. Blue, blue light causes so much eye strain. Right. So Acer put the, the research time into developing technology that kind of eliminates that. Yeah, and it's not something that when you look at the screen, you're like, oh, I, I noticed something yeah. different. Like it just, it, the screen is really sharp and the SSD, combined with the SSD, this is a really snappy laptop. It's like, I think it's a 256 gigabyte SSD, right? 256 uh, gigabyte SSD and it's to the point where you just, you press the power button and it's so pretty much on the Windows on. 10 login screen. And I have tested it out with like Civilization 5. Uh, I've played Minecraft on it because you know, Sometimes Aww. when you're stuck in an airport or something like that, you want to try uh, playing a few games, but the screen is really nice on this. And yeah. one of the things that uh, is one of the smaller touches that they've kind of done that uh, is one of the first things you'll notice is that the F keys at the top, you don't have to hold the function key to be able to use any of them. Uh, I don't know. This is kind of a like a pet peeve for me when you I have think to toggle. Yeah. When you have to toggle, and it's like I would rather, yeah, like if I'm gonna use an F key, I will hit the function key to use that F key. But I want to be able to adjust the volume by just holding the key without having to touch another. Have one. you been attacked by Gandhi yet? He is very violent yeah, in this no, game. He gets to I the nuclear age. He does that. that guy gets uh, atom bombs and he, wants, he comes after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, so I really like that about it. Uh, the uh, touchpad is nice. Speakers are pretty yeah. good too. For I know. So I did not expect that because I got, have the same thing on the Spin 7. Uh, I was expecting, oh, it's going to be Ultrabook sound, which is it's passable but not great. This actually sounds pretty decent. And it, So it has the two speakers on the bottom and I think it also comes a little bit out of the keyboard too, something kind of like what the right. MacBook Air does, but uh, yeah, I set this on top of my refrigerator while I wash dishes, and I can. What about like the keyboard? Here. Do you like the keyboard? 
The keyboard, if you're used to something like the MacBook Air, it's pretty Same. much it's like that. Like yeah. uh, not a lot of travel because it's a very thin keyboard, but I no, don't find myself hitting the wrong key or anything. Like, now, it feels clicky. You will notice that. Ah yes. Uh, okay, this is this is the new trend, folks. Sorry, it's and you know, Apple did not do this first. This, no. this was done by many notebook manufacturers. Yep. The only ports on this USB are USB-C. Mm -hmm. Now, Acer was nice enough. They do include in the box, both for your laptop and my laptop, a USB-C to USB right. ad adapter. Isn't that a novel idea? I know. Having it, adapters it's for... It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, they're not going to have any of these. We should probably put them in the box. Well, yeah. So <laughs> the first time it came to charging this PC, I was like, I was like oh, right, USB-C. Well... Well, I want to, I want to also have <laughs> HDMI out, no. and and I want to plug in my mouse, no. and then, I, then I looked in the box again. I was like, oh, they actually gave me adapters for that stuff. It, That's it, nice. It keeps you from getting home and then going. Oh, I got to go back to the store. Ah, oh, spend another three hundred dollars. Yeah. So that's all included. Oh, and by the way, when we do the full reviews of these. I got some USB accessories. Uh, oh, so, yeah, you're gonna like them. Uh, now, battery life on this. I've I've heard that you can get up to about 10, 11 hours if you baby it, but yeah. normal usage closer to eight or nine, right? Around eight or nine. I mean, I've only had this for three days, I think. So I've only run the battery down once, and that was I think the majority of what I was doing was just installing stuff on it, getting it set up for what I would use an everyday laptop for. So, and I think I got around. Eight, yeah. like eight or nine, and that was with downloading a bunch of stuff. Like I was here just downloading games because we have really fast <laughs> internet here. <laughs> now, I, this is going to run you about a thousand fifty dollars. By the time you get it on Amazon and everything, it's going to be down to a thousand. I, I would put that more in. This is executive class. This is you know the guy who doesn't want a touch screen, doesn't want to be touching his screen at all, wants to ha say that he has the thinnest notebook in the world, wants to say that his notebook is super light and can give him like 11 hours of battery life. Yeah. That's the kind of person who would like this. Yeah, someone who, if you touch screen isn't something that you necessarily need or want and you just want something light, compact, and doesn't sacrifice build quality, then this is, I. So far, this I really like this, and it goes it goes well with the suit, yeah. right? That's that's mm -hmm. a pretty good ultrabook, Brian. And I, I'd even say that it would be one of the best Acer's ever met, Unle until until, uh, until you see this. Yeah. Now this, I mean, put them side by side because they, of course, Very they both similar. share their S7 heritage. But this one is thinner. Yes, Look okay, how yours thinner. Though. Yours is thinner, so yours is uh, what is it? 0.39 <laughs> inches thick. Mine's mm -hmm. 0.43 inches thick. So mine's 0 0.04 inches thicker. Yeah. It's also heavier. Yours is 2.48 and mine's 2.6. Uh, yeah, let me see. Let's see. Oh, it's uh, so heavy. I uh, can't. Uh, it's, it's like a wait. dying sun. Uh, my, my scrawny executive okay, arms get can't. your scrawny <laughs> executive thing out of there. But what this does give you for that little bit of extra weight is uh, it's going to give you the touchscreen, which I love. It's got the same hinge. Uh, that you're going to find on the Acer S7 and all the others. It's that is pretty. I like it the is all the black. same screen. So this is an IPS version um, of uh, of that screen. The beautiful colors, That's beautiful sharp. viewing angles. It is. Sharp. I mean, you can go off axis to about there before you actually start to lose the light. And uh, you know, of course, it's going to be touch. And oh, by the way, it's also what? convertible. It's a, so it's a tablet, and this will do continuum. It's a 14-inch 1080p screen, IPS under Gorilla Glass 4, 10-point multi-touch. It's a 7th gen Intel i7. So yours is an i5, this is an i7. This is going to be the uh, it's the 7Y75 processor. Mm -hmm. uh, just like yours, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. It's a 256 gigabyte SSD. About 8 hours of battery life, although i would gotten that as long as 9 and as low as 6, depending on what I've been doing. Right, right. So, like, when I did the rundown tests with everything, I almost didn't crack 6. Ooh. Uh, but, I mean, that's still pretty good. I mean, for, for everything yeah, you're going to do Yeah, for that test, this. that's yeah. not bad. It does uh, the standard modes that, that Acer has done on their tablets and their convertibles for the longest time. So, like, this is their stand mode, if Alex would switch over to the... Yeah. So, this is the stand mode. Uh, you've got your standard notebook mode. And unlike a lot of other convertibles where you know it feels like a tablet that's been stuck to a keyboard mm -hmm. uh, this does feel really good i mean this is a notebook if you if, if you weren't able to flip the screen yeah. back you would just feel like it's the next version of the s7 and so i guess it, is this like aluminum is this an yes. aluminum body uh, well, both of ours are aluminum unibody yeah because it feels nice it, like, it doesn't really, feel really cheap nice. at all no no it's also got just like yours it's a two uh two by two 802.11ac multi-user MIMO mm -hmm. plus 802.11abgn plus Bluetooth 4.1. So all this, the latest and greatest wireless standards. Yeah. Uh, 
again, like yours, only the two USB-C ports. Uh, right. So you will need to invest, but like yours, it also gives you the USB-C to USB-A dongle as well as the USB-C to uh, to HDMI. By the way, uh, that the first one here, that is the, the multi-use USB-C, so it actually, that's display port coming out. Right. Uh, which will give you the zero latency connectivity in case you, you know, wanted to do some... And you can use either one for power. It's oh, yeah. For charging. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty that's cool. the beauty of USB-C. Yeah. Uh, and one thing I noticed, too, using this, even when I was playing games or, you know, kind of pushing it to the limit, uh, no fan. No. Oh, super quiet. Super quiet. Super quiet. We and like it doesn't that. get hot, either. No. No. So even on my MacBook Air, I will feel the underneath the WASD keys is, pro I think, where the processor sits, and it heats up. So, like, my fingertips mm -hmm. get really hot when I'm using that, and you can hear the fan kick on that, too. There's no... Vents nope. on nope. this. It doesn't have to. It, because the seventh gen is so much cooler than everything else that they've had. I'll, I will say this. Um, if you go to the overhead, maybe, or the side. Actually, go to the side. I think you'll see it better. Uh, uh, you can't really tell on camera. Oh, there, oh, it, is. there, it, there is. it is. It yeah. is a fingerprint magnet. Yours is not so much. Yours is a little bit better. A little bit better. Uh, you can still see, like, yeah. But it the does edges. drive you mad because you're like, ah! Oh, Beautiful machine. I don't want fingerprints. That's that's the nice thing about the S7. It's white, so you don't really see the fingerprints. But on black, it shows ah, up. It definitely OCD shows up. Just yeah. gets set off. Now we are going to show full in-depth reviews in two weeks because this is how we do it on Know How. We don't just open the box, say it's cool, and say go buy it. No. We're going to see. That we're going to start using these as our daily drivers. This will be the yeah. machine that we're going to be using over the next two weeks. We're going to give you an honest to goodness review of whether or not these are laptops that you can buy. Now mine. Is twelve hundred, so it's one hundred and fifty dollars more than yours. But you get a lot for that. You do oh. get a lot for that. So you know, but I think I think Acer did something smart here, which is this is more of the powerhouse. It's a little, you know, it's, it's got <laughs> it's the, not that much thicker though. It's I mean, really not, or that much heavier. But so. I mean, there will be people who care about that thickness, who care about that weight, and who really don't want a touchscreen. That's true. That's so. true. Go figure. So we're going to be bringing you that in two weeks along with our choices for essential USB-C peripherals. So if you are looking to replace your notebook in this coming cycle, they're most likely going to look right. Like these. Right. And another reason why we take our time when we have these reviews is because it's really easy to be impressed with a machine the first time you use it. Yep. But then, you know, once you start using it in your everyday life, I call it kind of the Leo effect, because like, yeah. <laughs> when that, Leo unboxes something. first week, something, it's, yeah. it's shiny, it's beautiful. After I love like, well, this. It's the how does, it, thing. how does it deal with my backpack? Because it's going to sit in my backpack for the next six months. Right. Like, you kind of have to let the glow of the, of the new, new toy that you have kind of uh, wash away. And, and after you've used it for a little while, that's what we do. Know how. We take the glow off things so you don't have to. <laughs> That's right. And we enjoy it. Yeah, we do. Uh, well, folks, we know that this has been a lot of information. The projector, the, uh, the Acer Wonderland, these two notebooks. We're going to make sure that you can find links to everything in our show notes. And Brian, where did they get those? Twit.tv slash KH. And not only will you find show notes and links to these laptops that we are taking a look at, but you'll find uh, easy ways to subscribe to the show and or download so you never have to miss any of the knowledge. Indeed. And don't forget that well, you can also find us on the socials. Uh, probably the best place would be to go to Google+. Plus. If you go there and look for Know How, you'll find our group. There is an approval process because we're trying to keep out all the, the spam accounts. But join the Kitas. There's over 10,000 of us who are going to help you with any projects you might have. Maybe suggest new projects you can start working on. Or maybe you're an expert and you want to help the next generation of makers. Again, go to Google Plus and just look for Know How. Yep, but uh, posting your questions and things like that on Google Plus isn't the only place that you can get a hold of us. Mm -hmm. If you want to ask us something more directly or see what we're doing when we're not on Know How, if you want to see Corgi GIFs, mm, if you want to see, butt. I mean, more recently, our Christmas photo. Yes. And <laughs> some of the behind-the-scenes photos from that. Wow. And I think there was more recently a, a, a Twitter post that I did where uh, you actually see all hope in... Alex's eyes drain from drain, out. drain from his face. I was just face. surprised there was any left. There was a small glimmer, and I was able now. to destroy that by dressing up like him. I did not realize I was wearing the same twit uh, collared shirt oh, underneath my. On, I did actually, yeah, yeah, yeah right. and a black tie, and that's the exact. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> 
That's it. <laughs> when I finally killed Alex uh, Spears. So. Oh, speaking of Alex, don't forget that you can find him on Twitter at A N E L F three. Mm -hmm. That's an L three. He's a good guy, folks, He's and uh, he tweets a lot about uh, going to New York and drinking scotch. Yeah, Scott, Scott, Scott. It's Scott, the one Scott, time Scott. a year I go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're going to find me on Twitter at Padre SJ. If you follow me, you'll find out what I'm doing when I'm not in the brick house, like when I'm in Rome, you know, hanging out with the Pope. Riding motorcycles around Italy. That was so much fun. Hey, be a bro and invite me next uh, time. By the way, I was, gonna, I was setting up a GoPro, and my provincial, who was there, he was also, and he, he comes by and goes, no. No, we <laughs> reserve that for the Pope. <laughs> no, well, he, no, he just said, no, you, you know, you're going to be distracted enough as it is to <laughs> maybe not doing that. Let's, let's do that. But I want footage of when you, uh, <laughs> when you lay her down. No, you have to put her down no, into a controlled slide no, again. No, it will never happen again. <laughs> Until next time, I am Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, keep it thin. <laughs>